put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I try to jam pack my videos with as much content and as much detail as I possibly can. Anything I feel I can comment on and that I feel you might be interested in, I pretty much put in the video. I try not to repeat myself and talk fairly fast. If the video is too long for you, I have recorded a shorter version and the link will be in the description box. Boys Don't Cry Mood Review Nebraska. Brandon Tina seeks a way out of the go nowhere environment and he meets a group of friends who similarly, yeah, same situation basically, and he starts to hang out with them. He even falls in love with Lana and whether or not you as a viewer fall in love with either of them, you definitely fall in love with them as a couple. You you want to see things work out for them. And some of these the, the this group of friends and some family don't really have much of a future and a few of them are even ex-cons and seemingly quick to violence and, and the like. And this gets downright dangerous when we take into account that Brandon Tina was born Tina Brandon. He is a female to male non-operative trans man and I will be referring to Brandon by that name and by male pronouns as I I would not ever want to try to force the female gender onto him as as has you know happened far too much. Now this is a lot like Monster. It puts us in the place of and tells the plot from the perspective of a person that many have trouble feeling empathy towards. In this case Brandon Tina and in Monster it's Eileen Wuornos. And it focuses on a sweet and strong romance that said protagonist is involved with involved in as a way of human humanizing, universalizing, and lending lending a significant ray of hope to this otherwise potentially very dark world. In, in this case it's not quite as dark. And it makes the plot outcome all the more tragic even yeah even with as tragic as it already is. If you don't know the real-life story of Brandon Tina I would implore you not to find out but to watch the movie without knowing. Now, the this is yet another film that I watched years ago, continuing the series of these reviews, and it really made an impression on me. Again, this series of reviews and with this one I didn't even know much about trans issues back then and though I haven't watched it that many times since I absolutely love it and this is and 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 this as with a lot of the others I watched when it first came out or close to I, I believe I watched it on TV so it was probably a year after it came out, so around, around 2000, and I'm from 86, so I was like 13, 14 years old back then. I was just dealing with puberty and being attracted to girls and all this stuff, and you know, this movie comes on, I don't know much about it. Movie comes on, I sit, I watch, and I just I keep watching to the you know through the very end and yeah I think that says something about how gripping the movie is and it's not at all a secret to the viewer that Brandon was born female that's made clear at the very beginning and yeah this this really helped to give me a good first impression 
of trans individuals. I barely knew about trans issues when you know when I first watched this, and yeah, it, I, I like to think that I would still have ended up being very open to their issues and on their side, but yeah, this this didn't exactly hurt. Now, the to an extent, Brandon tries to fit in and sometimes goes along with things that he doesn't necessarily want to do, but he figures it's expected of men in, you know, these parts. He, he was driven a fair a amount of distance, yeah, something like that, by these new friends. And, you know, when, when he wakes up next morning, it's like, where am I? And, yeah, and, and he's informed that, I think it's Falls City, the place he's at, and he's told by his cousin, who he calls, that's not even on the map. Now, the... Yeah, so, so Brandon is some, sometimes pressured because the other guys figure, you know, he won't say no, he won't stand up for himself. But at the same time, he's not a pushover. If there's something he really wants, he's going to go out of his way to get it. And we especially see that in the love he and Lana share. But, yeah, in general, he'll stand up for women even if he doesn't necessarily stand up that much for himself. And the gonna have to use the notes. Took a lot of notes right, right as I was watching, even in addition to the ones I make before. He's very much a dreamer, and that that can sometimes rub off on the people he's around. He's very, yeah. He he really thinks things are gonna work out just the way you know it. You, you kind of see that in part in that he does dress in male clothing and identify as male and yeah you know there's not every trans individual is going to admit to the rest of the world that or, or follow along that that side of themselves a lot sadly stay in the closet as it were and yeah it takes a tremendous amount of courage to actually yeah now this is very much and he also he has a tendency to to fall in love with with cute girls so that's also that's part of the problem he yeah he wants to be with these girls and yeah it's the, the um, yeah and we see that it's the the environment is very much one where men feel entitled to the company of women even sex with them there's a lot of sexual harassment like if if a guy tries to pick up a girl and she turns him down he instantly insults her and you know maybe doesn't even back down and it's a, you know, the, where the men don't respect the boundaries of the women. And the, and, and I already mentioned some about these, the, the group of friends and family. They're all very bored where they are, in, in addition to not really having a future. And several of them have children but are you know broken up with the partner that they had the child with and such and Brandon is very charming and really relates to others you know the he has a real way of just going in and, and understanding what the other person is going through and saying you know what it's it's the same for me. I've I've been there, so I completely get it. And yeah, and and sometimes, you know, this this doesn't always work, but it also inspires jealousy in others. Others that have more trouble relating to others can yeah. 
and the music in the film really places us right there. The there's one of one of the songs, and it usually it is, you know, songs with with lyrics and such. It's not, you know, I mean there there is you know just stuff that doesn't really you know music in this that doesn't have lyrics and doesn't but the music fits it feels like this is what these people are listening to or would be listening to if it's a scene where they aren't listening to it you feel like yeah they would be listening to it and it fits the the mood of the scene and yeah one of them is literally a song about codeine you know how he, this this guy just so much pain just the only way he gets by is codeine or codine as he pronounces it in part to fit the rhyming scheme and the you know some of the things that the you know these young people do in you know when we meet Brandon he's about 20 and the you know the rest of the group is also around that time around that age and you know there's not much to do in Fall City, so it's you know joy riding and bumper skiing, which is exactly what you think it is. And that covers that. Now, the in order to make make it more convincing, Brandon wraps his breasts in this, I, I, what was it called, pressure gauze or so, something like that to, yeah, and to, and puts, you know, socks down the front of his pants and Hilary Swank actually did this for a month before, you know, making the movie and the neighbors thought that she was her own brother coming to visit. Now, the some people are going to say that Brandon was like just a liar and he he isn't entirely honest about things like his past and you know he there are some things in his past that He mentions fairly early on. He has a court date. So that yeah. And it's again, like I say, it's courageous that he really went for his identity like that. And I I would implore anyone to I would ask anyone who looks at at someone like this and say you know a liar Brandon belonged to a minority often abused and in that situation a number of individuals in the minority are going to try to I, be I believe it's called passing in, in the in in trans I'm, I'm not completely I don't know everything about trans issues, but I believe it's called passing when a trans individual can pass for the gender identity that they identify as. And yeah, you know, this trans individuals are some of the ones who have it the worst, but other minorities are, you know, atheists, gays, and sometimes you know, people of other ethnicities, although they have a very hard time of, of hiding, but, you know, sometimes in, like, job applications, they might, you know, yeah, they, yeah, there's, there's that study that if, if someone from an ethnicity uses a white-sounding name, they're more likely to be called in for an interview, so there's, there's that, but, yeah, you know, this is these these are people who are physically abused a lot when when they are you know 
Yeah, when, when someone realizes. And we don't, we don't know a lot about Brandon's in, in the movie. We don't know a lot about his background, but it's said fairly early on. Again, by the, by the cousin, you know, he asks, do you want your mother to lock you up again? So, yeah, there's, there are some things there in, in the past. Now, the Kimberly Pierce, who directed this, spent almost four years casting Brandon and very nearly gave up. She did not want to make the film if she couldn't find the right actor for Brandon. And Hilary Swank is amazing in the role. It's There's so much to the performance. There is this... Every step of the way, this is someone who was born female, who is constantly... It's, it's mentioned fairly early on that he can't afford all this hormone treatment. And that, that's the thing, you know, he's... He's in this kind of go-nowhere situation, and... How is he supposed to afford all this? Yeah, it's, it's just... That's just simply a luxury he doesn't have. But but yeah, so he's every step of the way, he's, you know, the way he's using his voice and the the movement. We we see fairly early on that he, you know, puts all the clothes on and you know, we see him wrap him down wrapping down his chest, putting socks in, and tries to like stand and and smile and such and do it in a way that is convincing as a male and that's every step of the way he's yeah there's there's that and and this yeah trying to trying to relate to the others trying to be accepted and yeah she did fantastic, and she, in general, is an amazing actress. And Chloe Savigny also just, yeah, they're, they're both perfectly cast. And the... And, and this was also when Swank was fairly unknown, and this kind of really put her on the map. Now... The title is indeed from the the Cure song, and a a cover of that song is also played in this. Now, this was this was about and made when gender identity disorder and other trans issues were misunderstood and a lot less visible than today, but sadly not not anywhere near enough has happened in the decade and a half since this came out and the two decades since the real events that this is based on. This is a movie that's extremely hard to watch, but very necessary. And it explores themes of freedom, courage, identity, and empowerment. Now, Kimberly Pierce both wrote and directed this, and it's the only one that I've seen of what she's directed. Now, this was made on, I believe, a $2 million budget, and there are times when you can see, you know, that they didn't have that much money. Some have, have gone as far as to say that it's like made for TV quality. I disagree. It's, it looks better than that. Now, it's, you know, depressing, sad, tragic, highly realistic, absolutely heartbreaking. And Kimberly Pierce researched and understood 
and included immense detail in this. The she interviewed some of the people portrayed and involved and spent nearly five and a half years working on the screenplay. Now most of the characters in this have this very kind of meaningless existence as I've already somewhat gone over and they spend a lot of time at the local bar drinking and you know using drugs just to block out the just hopeless situation that is their regular lives this is highly nuanced and it's been pointed out that in less capable hands this would have turned very exploitative and you know been just finger wagging about the you know the way outsiders are treated in the bible belt and this this does understand every character doesn't necessarily like every character but everyone is a human being and yeah, it's now the and and Kimberly Pierce has stated that she admires Brandon's audacity, compassion, free spirit, and passion and generous nature towards women. Now. This has somewhat of a slow pace. It's very tense. And Kimberly Pierce chose not to show Brandon before he started identifying as a male so that the viewers could see him as he saw himself as a male. Meaning, as a male. The ending is amazing and forever edged into your mind etched into your mind. Now, a number of online user reviews call this weird, and I couldn't quite tell for sure what they were referring to, but I would hope that it's not because it's about trans issues, but the dreamlike hallucinatory feel to some sequences which is very much intentional again placing us there there's a there's a sense that day and night kind of like there's nothing to look forward to so you you can't necessarily tell how many days have passed because why even why even bother keeping track there's 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 nothing to look forward to. There's no, you know, yeah, it's just this completely. There, there's a one point where a character is asked, you know, you, you know, she's like wasted, and it's like, how could how could you even work in in your condition? And the reply is, you don't have to be sober to weigh spinach I think it is or some yeah one one of those really green foods and yeah it's yeah it's it's this mindless you know work where you're just just putting in the hours and you just you know it's yeah it's just it's draining not because it's hard but because it's so repetitive and there's no end in sight and it's not even even remotely well paying either. Now, this uses time lapse photography to great effect, and the visual style is very compelling. Kimberly Pierce, I believe she was a cinematographer before she made this, and this was one of her first big, you know, feature films. And yeah, it really captures the environment. And it's... This was made 
you know, you know, the end of the 90s and in the 90s there were several depictions of trans individuals where the this depiction was very ugly, very mean-spirited and it had this this tone of the trans individual tricked others and it's you know it's supposed it's it's used for like gross out gags and yeah so this this came about at very much the right time we really needed a movie like this please comment thumbs up and subscribe for more content